I don't know, uh, some of you, uh, uh, especially some of the newer chorus members, probably don't know too much about about uh, Jack's history here. That's good. And, and we don't, we're not going to bring it up. But, but uh, he's, he's been around the society for about 45 years. And uh, he has probably done more to for quartetting and things in this chapter than, than anybody else. He probably has, has been in or started somewhere around 40 quartets. And uh, his, yeah, there's, there's one of me starting right there. <laughs> but uh, he, uh, he's been involved in uh, a lot of things here in this chapter, uh, from uh, drawing pretty pictures, uh, or scenery for our shows, to uh, putting on uh, New Year's Eve parties, uh, to uh, help me along here. Selling tickets. I, uh, probably uh, uh, singing tags till all hours in the morning. And, uh, but uh, we uh, we just thought that uh, if there were any of the, the people here tonight, friends, relatives, uh, whoever, that has some little interesting little stories about this man here. It, might be a very appropriate time to to say it. Now, no, this is one night, Terry. We'll let you. Know. This is not a family show tonight. <laughs> I uh, I probably have uh, have been uh, in quartets and singing with uh, with Jack for quite a while, uh, uh, at least steadily the last eight years, uh, or before, I guess it was before that even, so, but uh, many of you have sung with him, uh, and uh, uh, there, there probably are, are some cute things, but like Terry says, maybe some of them we can't tell. Yes. My name's Ralph Muller, and about, uh, let's see, probably six or seven, maybe eight, eight years ago, I just moved back to the area, and we had to go sing uh, Valentine's. And this was a special request. There were only two Valentines that night. It was a couple nights before Valentine's Day. So Jack was the was the bass, and I was the baritone. And I think uh, oh, I don't remember who the other the other two two guys were. Anyway, we went and we sang the sang the two tags. And he says, uh, "Would you guys like to have a, a little something to drink?" So we went to this little Irish pub out on uh, on Alpine. And we were there for about four hours <laughs> singing, and you know, every time we'd sing, somebody'd buy us around. There was there was a, a ladies' bachelorette party there, and, and uh, uh, by the time we got out of there, there were about eight, eight sets of, of, uh, of drinks around there. And uh, Jack really knows places to go. You know, when you go to sing with Jack, you have a good time. Some of the tunes were old barbershop kind of songs. And, uh, I saw three guys walk in the front door and um, didn't pay them much mind. And I, I stood there at the piano and somebody tapped me on the shoulder. Uh, hey, buddy, you like to sing, don't you? And I turned around and I said, yeah, I, I do. He says, you ever heard of S-P-E-B-S-F-S-O-S-Q-S-A? I said, no, no, I never heard of that. And he said, uh, you ever heard of barbershop music? And I said, yeah, kind of. He said, uh, well, why don't, you, why don't you stop over next Wednesday night? Or No, didn't you come and pick me up? We went to 
a rehearsal is what it was. That was a long at, time ago. At the, uh, <laughs> when we were rehearsing at the Lexicon Club. Okay. That was in 1971. And so Jack organized a quartet uh, with myself and Jack and Al Van I Warden and Bernie. <coughs> Bernie Pullman. And we picked out a name. Uh, we called ourselves the Galaxies Quartet. And I think at that time, we rehearsed quite a bit, uh, Jack was probably in at least two quartets, probably three, maybe there was one I didn't know about. <laughs> but eventually, uh, the Galaxies Quartet, in two years later, 1973, we won the uh, district championship uh, in Michigan. And um, I wanted to tell that little story because uh, if it wasn't for Jack, there wouldn't have been a Galaxies Quartet. Happy birthday, buddy. I got to enlarge on this story with Terry. <laughs>
Sally always said that when I died, she'd have somebody deliberately sing a tag off key <laughs> to see if I straightened up in the coffin. <laughs> And there were a lot of people there in the funeral parlor wondering what the hell was going on when three of us stood by the coffin and we sang something slightly off key. <laughs> uh, gosh, <laughs> there's hundreds of stories. <laughs> I don't think we have that much time. Tell, Hi, tell, me, tell everybody who you are. You my name is Susie Soper, and for those of you who don't know, that's my husband, Bruce. And he has been Jack's golf partner on Wednesday night for, for 26, years. 26 years. I first met Jack at the Grand Rapids Golf Club on a Wednesday night. He had just gotten back from California. And this man, all he did was talk about golf. And I was new to the game myself, and I didn't know what the heck he was talking about. Two things about Jack. Three, actually. He's always tweaking his swing. He picks the most amazing women for his wives, and he's a forever friend. I believe some quartet sang it on the Nash national circuit, and uh, so we were all woodshedding it. And I always got one word. Jack, do you remember that? Yona yeah. from Arizona? <laughs> Yona from Arizona. The line goes, I'll give you my permission. But he's throwing it, he's a silver. I'll give you my commissions. <laughs> <laughs> I did it every time. <laughs> but Jack forgave me. <laughs> singing with Jack and his lovely wife and Susie Lilly in a mixed quartet, so that's fun. And uh, I get, of course you know Jack, uh, he dug me out of the chorus and there's a rookie standing there amongst all the guys and he says, hey I think you've got pipes, you want to try out singing a quartet? I said, sure! <laughs> so he got me started and oh, it must have been 1996 or so. Uh, he says, well, got a couple guys going, and well, it didn't work, so we got another guy, we got John Baker and uh, uh, Chikowski, uh, Dave, and it started to come together, well, we called ourselves Never Before. Well, we were pretty green, and it was, you know, kind of shy about getting up in front of people, not sure exactly if you're doing everything right, so uh, we had a couple little gigs, and we did some simple polecat songs, and we had a couple, three other ones we kind of knew, and uh, well, we had a little gig over uh, somebody's uh, graduation. No, no, no. Let's see. It was a class reunion or something over to Cannesburg, I think it was. And uh, so we were going to do this little show. And kind of rookies, you're nervous. You get up there and do your show. And then a little later, Jack says, "Oh, by the way, we got a we got a show up in Cadillac tonight there. <laughs> in Adeline's course had somebody cancel a, a country western kind of a theme and." The, the lead singer, this country western star, she just was sick, couldn't show up. So, so we were going to go up and be uh, the headliners, you know, all of a sudden, wait a minute. <laughs> so I learned the, the meaning of the different meanings of a couple words, and one of them was experience, and the other one was confidence. So we're, John Baker and I are standing there shaking in our boots, I don't know about Dave, but uh, Jack was all calm and collected, uh, he dug, we dug up some plaid shirts, some old straw hats. I don't know if, if we had cap guns or not, but we went up there and we, <laughs> he taught us just the beginning of uh, some little country or western song, an old one, just about the first line of it. And then uh, when we got done with that, we said, Yahoo! We threw our hats off. And then, so we went in to do our, you know, our polecat songs. We got through all of those and a couple other ones. And 
the uh, ladies were so pleased that we bailed them out of trouble that they invited us back next year when they had time to practice and rehearse. <laughs> so it, it gave me confidence and uh, it was a heck of an experience, i got to tell you that. That's only one. <laughs> Happy birthday. Forget it. <laughs> we 
were out at uh, Byron Hills, 525 yards, and he lets one of those 300-yard drives fly, and he's only got like about 180 yards left of the green, which he did with his 8-iron. But then he promptly four-putted. <laughs> that a couple of times over there at uh, Grand Rapids Golf Club, used to be called El Terra. Every time we come to that par five, he'd say, now don't you say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you are, are golfers, but uh, when when you get see him down in his domain in Florida, it, it, it'll blow your mind. I saw him out back of the place one day, and he's got a whole bunch of clubs. And he's just taking them and, and he's throwing the club one at a time. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just getting my swing down. So they try to get them all to land in the same place. I... <laughs> <laughs> then he comes up to me and he says, you know, I finally figured it out. There's only uh, like 63 things that you have to remember when you go up there to the take the ball. And he come back a couple days later and he said, I found two more. <laughs> so every day there was something changed here. He read a different book and he, he uh, got a, a new swing. And, uh, this one's better. Uh, this club is better. And that ball is better. Uh, but I have a daughter that, uh, that had the opportunity about, oh, four or five years ago, I guess, to go out with Jack and I and somebody else there, and uh, afterwards she says to me, how old is that guy? And I said, 75. 75? There's got to be something wrong with this. I should be able to beat a 75-year-old guy. <laughs> and uh, she called me the other day, by the way, and she says, uh, tell Jack I, I finally broke 100, so. <laughs> now the reason I was throwing all those clubs is I'm right-handed, but I play golf left-handed, which is kind of unnatural. So I was taking all these clubs and throwing them left-handed to kind of get the use of that, the feel of that thing. I still don't have it. <laughs> it came to my attention here uh, a while back that there, there is a, a, an item that uh, barber shoppers get after they have been here 35 years. And uh, uh, I just happened to get mine this last year, and, and I, I was kind of proud of it, being in the society 35 years. And I, I said to Jack, uh, where is yours? I know, he says, I haven't seen it in, in a long, long time. So uh, we, we just happened to find it, Jack. So. Where? Another little little story about this. Since Jack originated this group called the Golden Oldies, and then he went on to Greener Pastures, and uh, by and by I got into this quartet, and uh, I, I really had a pretty good time uh, with him. But the, the three guys that I sang with, that he got started, uh, I they they needed a baritone. I, I was singing lead at the time. I said, I'd like to try out to be a baritone. Okay, good. Be glad to have you. Well, right afterwards, I got to realizing that this was not going to be an easy task because I didn't know how to sing baritone. That's Ralph's get back at And the next item was I couldn't read music, so how in the world was I going to learn this thing? But it but it took some doing. But when I got uh, my golden oldie badge there, I, I got to thinking, uh, once I, I finally got to be a golden oldie again, but the other three guys weren't around. So uh, <laughs> it's nice to have another member of the golden oldies back again. So, so uh, do, you, uh, do you have a song in you? Do I have a song? Can, can you? Do you got enough voice? We'll try. 
Well, I, we, we got another one because we got your mixed quartet here. Can you do one with them? Sure. I, I, I have to plead ignorance because I, I can't remember your name. Vintage Vibes. Vintage Vibes. just for tonight. Take a 
chest with me, with me. I'll sing sweet love songs, honey, all the time if you will come and be my sweet baby, my now I ain't got nobody and nobody cares for me. I got the blues and it ain't news that nobody, nobody cares for me, for me.